the one of the soldiers like you know, asked me to get out from the uh, truck and they want to abandon me on the forest on the you know on the bushes and one of the guys came and say why why would you you know want to leave this guy this boy in the bushes by himself and he say well we picked him up from the rebel areas and he's a rebel me was there was a um, military convoy, Sudanese military convoy who came to our area. Then I sneaked in without telling my family, without telling anyone, and I thought maybe uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the town to go to school. But when they took me, they took me and then I, I, I was like trying to say to myself, like, you know, I'm not old enough to know what is happening, but I was told that this is how life is, especially Africans. And I said to myself, no, I can't run away in the night because it's going to be very dangerous for me. I have no, like, I don't know the language properly. I don't know, I know no one. I've never been to the city before. I've never been to the town before. Even a small town, I've never been to any town. That was my first time to be in the city. Then in the early morning, we slept. In the early morning, I just left everything, all my bags, all my luggage, and I just ran away from them. So I didn't like, uh, you know, our suppression was, I actually left them. Um, I left my, uh, my siblings and my moms and uh, other people, like cousins and everybody. After I finished high school in two, nearly 99, 2000, there was conscription. And I thought to myself, no, I can't do it. Because I actually came from a place where I was nearly to be recruited by those warlords to go and fight in the Sudan like a war. And the thing is that what like, I don't want to do uh, to get involved is to be recruited and then go and fight back where I actually left. Then um, there was this opportunity that people like, you know, you can apply for, you know, asylum seekers. And at the same time, I applied to Australian High Commissions and the first one was also rejected. The second one was the one that I got uh, asked to go for interview and then I was lucky and then I went when I arrived in Australia wow um, I didn't know what to expect but when I went to the countryside in Australia there was no one I felt like is they like are they people here but I could see the houses and the cars on the street so there's there was no one and it was so amazing yes and I was taken to Centrelink, then they enrolled me and they told me that I, I would be given some money. This was great. I, did, I don't have that support before. And, but all of a sudden I said, look, it's not about Centrelink or money that I will be supported, but I think I have to go and study. That was my first you know, uh, motivation to leave my family in the first place. And if there is an opportunity to come to Australia, as I can see a great country, why not to go and find a place to stay, stay and study? So that um, to be a and see where I can fit in. And um, it took me, I think, 12 months. So I went there and I did a um, degree. I think I did two degrees, double degrees. I did Bachelor of Arts in Social Work. So it helped me a lot because I think my personality is about like working with other people, and if there's anything I can do to help someone, that is who I am. And not only here, but since even when I was in Sudan. And since I finished, I've been working in different areas. I worked with child protection or um, how about home care. I'm now working with migrant research centers, helping especially young, I was working with young people who are out of, you know, in and out, you know, from uh, custody. So I was working with the JJ. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's what I usually uh, use to um, motivate them or to like, understand their problems. And most of the young people, especially when I was doing Youth on Track, which was like a program assisting young people who are young, you know, they call it young offenders. So when I talk to them, I understand their situation and why they're doing what they're doing and also telling them that you don't have to do that to achieve what you want. There's other way that you can, you know, work hard and, you know, be who you want to be.
without getting into trouble with the, uh, with the law. So some of them, when I talk to them about my journey, they feel like, wow, so you have this kind of journey and you're not here so trying to help me. Even one of the boys told me, I thought I was not lucky as you are, but you know, I was too lucky. I got my mom and my dad and I've been together with them and I don't listen to them. I, I, I told that person that, you know, it's not about, like your mom can tell you, but it's up to you to make the decision of what you want to, to be or what you want to do. Because your moms will be supporting you for some certain period of time. Once you get older, it will be up to you. We can try to help, but to whether you will succeed is you, like people will say yes I did but you never know and life is like in along the journey you will find like you 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 would have gone through a whole lot of things and in some stages you would have helped someone you help them whatever you little that you contributed to assist or help them to you know move on to other person who may also put a little bit of you know assistant and I don't know, like, you know, I'm just trying to say I can just try to be the best or do the best that I could to assist someone. But to whether I help that person as I would like to help, I don't know. But as long as you did the best that you could to help that person, whoever that person is going to be, I think, you know, we should be okay. <laughs>